What is up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to WWE 2K18 AI Universe Mode. This is WCW Week 11. Now I'm going to put you on mute until we know what the hell match is coming up. Take it away, Cole, you dumbass. spending your time with us folks not sure you can hear me with this capacity crowd letting loose but we're about ready to kick this thing off if you even think about changing that channel you'll regret it stay tuned and WCW in Japan tonight which it was supposed to be for the damn Japan Super Show and actually the world champ Nakamura not on the card tonight in his home country. But nonetheless, we have a singles women's match here with two women who we have not seen a lot of here on WCW. And it will be Ember Moon versus the Hall of Famer Alundra Blaze looking to climb the rankings in the women's division. And here we go. Making her way to the ring from Dallas, Texas, Ember Moon. And her opponent from Tampa, Florida, Alundra Blaze. And as said before, we haven't seen much of either of these two women, but... That uh, leaves both these women as wild cards in my eyes, starting out with a lockup here. And uh, real life right here. I got new glasses so I can fucking see finally. <laughs> I can see so clearly. But Ember Moon with the arm, but Alundra Blaze with the quickness, bringing Ember down by her arm and wrenching back. Ember, very talented. As you can see, Northern Light Suplex there. Probably the best high-flying woman, I guess you could say, in on the current WWE roster. But Alundra Blaze, as said before, Hall of Famer. And, oh my God, Ember, gourd buster. Alundra trying to suplex her over the top rope, not being able to do so. And Ember now picking up. The Hall of Famer here. Oh, fall away. Slam the strength by Ember Moon. I mentioned her high flying, but uh, she's proven to have a lot more than that. But Alundra are going to fight back here. Oh, look. Ooh, going for a Frankensteiner. But again, the strength into a power bomb. Ember Moon impressing me here tonight. And now what is she doing here? Pulling back on the arms. Oh, my God. Just stomping her face into the mat. Ember going for a shot there. Alundra with a forearm shot. And Ember with a jawbreaker. Back and forth we go. And continuing the back and forth. Neckbreaker putting Moon on the mat. Now Alundra going for a gut wrench suplex. Alundra showing the strength of her own. Look at the size difference between these two here. And Alundra basement drop kick to the face of Moon. Alundra, so with when it comes to height, so much taller than Ember in a splash from the middle rope. But Alundra, with all the agility in the world as well, one. Ember kicking out at one here. Alundra got to do a lot more to end this one. Drop kick between the shoulder blades of Moon. 
planting those vicious forearms into the forehead. Now Blaze picking Moon up off the mat here into the turnbuckle, turning Moon around. Oh, maybe she was looking for that stratosphere. That uh, handspring, her Karana, and another power bomb. Alundra cannot hit her Karanas on Ember. Ember will not allow it. Wait a second, wait a second. Handspring, forearm in the corner. And she usually follows up with the Eclipse, looking to get the crowd behind her. Now, what is she going to do here? Alundra was getting up, playing possum, it looked like, and with the dragon screw leg whip there. And it looks like Alundra possibly setting up for that stratosphere again. Oh, but Ember, DDT, will not allow Alundra to put her on the top turnbuckle to set up for it. Now, Ember. Oh, putting Alundra into the turnbuckle there. And Alundra with a lightning quick leg sweep there. And I've so far been impressed by both of these women here tonight. But only one can walk out the winner. And Alundra now trying to get some energy from the crowd. Oh, going to kick Ember in the face. But Ember said, not today, Blaze. Now, Ember putting Blaze against the ropes here. And Ember, uh-oh, springboard stunner to Blaze. Basically a version of the Eclipse there. One, two. Oh, and Blaze kicking out, not even 2.5, kicking out right at two. And now Ember calling Alundra to her feet here. Wait a second. Oh, my God. Springboard Tornado DDT there by Ember. Absolutely vicious. The quickness and the impact all in one. That was that was a brutal DDT. Now Ember looking for a kick there. Oh, but Blaze telling her to bring it. And Ember with that unique pinning combination. One, two. And Blaze kicking out there. Now Alondra. Whoa! Snap German! One! Two! And Ember kicking out. Both these women just so quick here tonight. The speed is amazing. Now Blaze tripping up. Ember locking in a Boston Crab. Ember close to the ropes. And Ember flipping Blaze onto her back there. Escaping the Boston Crab. Now Ember. Oh my God. Death Valley driver. Jesus. I think Ember is done playing around here. Now Blaze trying to crawl to her feet. Oh my, Ember with just strikes. Oh my God, this one of the glitches, Jesus Christ. 2K19, please fix that shit. <laughs> and now Ember dumping Blaze onto her head, but Ember worn out as well. In fact, Blaze making it to her feet before Ember. But Blaze out on those ropes right there. Ember with the forearm shot. Wait a second. Wait a second. Ember! Ember! He oh Jesus Christ! Going for the heat seeking missile there. And Blaze just one of the most vicious European uppercuts I have ever seen. Just not Ember's not even to her feet yet. Ref up to a three count. Ember making it back up into the ring. Now, whoa, Ember was going for something there. Both women swinging wildly. Backstabber, good God. This match has been crazy. Going for the cover. One, two, and Blaze kicking out of the backstabber. Literally any move that involves a backstabber is, I, I would never, ever want to take it in my life because... Fuck that. Ember now with a stun gun to Blaze. What is she trying to do here? Just circling Blaze. And now it took too long here. Another uppercut. But Ember faster. Oh, a fisherman 
driver. Ember's moveset is insane. Going for another cover. One, two, and no. Blaze still with more in the tank here. Now Ember, forearm shots to the skull. Picking Blaze up, but Blaze again with the European uppercut. And I do not think that was smart by Alundra. Crucifix! Crucifix! One! Two! No! Blaze's cockiness almost cost her the match there. Elbow drop to the heart. And now Ember looking for a handspring leg drop. Beautiful execution there. But Ember can't even get the cover. She's too worn out. Or maybe she doesn't want the cover. But Blaze again. Dragon screw. Ember down yet again. And that would be the right time to pander to the audience, Blaze. Now, Ember with an arm drag here. Kicking Blaze directly in the face. Jesus. Ember now with the strength. Beautiful spinning back suplex there. Oh, wait a second. Blaze. Blaze looking for the snap German suplex. But a rope break. And this match is continuing. Ember still fighting back. Oh, wait a second. Oh my god, neckbreaker into a butterfly suplex. Ember's moveset is absolutely out of control. Like, Jesus Christ. Wait a second, wait a second, Ember again. Springboard, stunner. And it has got to be over. Blaze has to be done. One, two, three. Your winner, Ember Moon. Hell of a match. Every single week, women putting on Bangers. Beautiful. Here is your winner, Ember Moon. And Ember Moon making a statement in the women's division. You know we're watching in the back, and they, for their sake, better be looking out for Ember Moon. We are moving on to the next match of the evening here on WCW Week 11. And we have what honestly like would be an awesome, awesome singles match in real life. But this is AI Universe Mode. And we have the show-off. Dolph Ziggler versus Johnny Wrestling, a.k.a. Johnny Gargano. The Battle of the Super Kicks. And it's happening right here, right here. Now. Making his way to the ring from Hollywood, Florida, weighing in at 218 pounds, Dolph Ziggler. Guys, what better? And his opponent, from Cleveland, Ohio, weighing in at 199 pounds, Johnny Gargano. And here we go, Gargano and Ziggler. And might I add, NXT, dear God, why did you put Ciampa and Gargano in a last man standing match? I'm scared to see what happens in that one, but Ziggler here with a back suplex and a kip up. He is called the show off for a reason. Oh, and a leaping bionic elbow, paying homage to the late great American dream, Dusty Rhodes. And um, we haven't seen too much of Ziggler, but we did see Gargano face off against the world champ Shinsuke Nakamura quite a few times, and Gargano with a leaping flatliner. Um, Gargano coming up short multiple times against Nakamura, though, not able to capture the world championship. And, oh, Ziggler going for a DDT there. Gargano looking up to pick up more momentum as he uh, was moving down the rankings. Jesus, dumping Ziggler on his head. Moving down the rankings after 
not capturing the championship on multiple occasions. Now Gargano. Oh my god, just lifting Ziggler into a back suplex position and tossing him. Ziggler now in the corner. What is Gargano? Oh, looking for a hangman's neck breaker, looks like. Yes, and hitting it flush. And Gargano now on the apron. Is he going? He can't be already. No way. No, Gargano with a springboard front missile dropkick. Thought he might be going for that slingshot spear. And now, Gargano snap suplex to Dolph. Both of these men, incredible, incredible wrestlers in their own right here. Oh, wait a second. Gargano, Gargano locking in the Gargano escape. And Ziggler so close to the ropes, but not close enough. And will he be forced to submit? No. Being able to get a knee strike and a shot to the face of Johnny Wrestling. Oh, but Gargano not letting Ziggler get in control. Going for a scoop slam there. Not working out. Now Ziggler, beautiful drop kick. Finally, Ziggler going to be able to get some offense in. Oh, but not for long. Wait, no, we're going back and forth, people. Back and forth. Now Gargano going for something here. Once again, back and forth. Ziggler, armbar, takedown, but across the second rope. Ugh. That was nasty looking and beautiful. Leaping elbow drop, and there is the show off. A veteran and another snap elbow there. And following up. Oh no. Oh, he's hitting. He's going for the heart stopper here. As the crowd counts along. And that's nine. And to finish off. Leaping elbow and Gargano might be at risk of a heart attack here. And Dolph Ziggler looking for it all the way across the ring. Super kick! And that probably damn well knocked the teeth of Johnny Gargano across the arena. One, two, three. Dolph Ziggler coming out on top here tonight, which is surprising. But here in professional wrestling, it only takes a single moment to turn the momentum around. And Dolph acted upon that opportunity and came out with a victory here tonight in Japan. Here is your winner, Dolph Congratulations to Mr. Ziggler starting up some momentum here tonight. But we are moving on with the evening. And up next, we have tag team action as we have the Usos who have been on a roll for a while lately. But they are facing off against two Hall of Famers, two legends. The debuting Hart Foundation, Bret Hart and Jim the Anvil Neidhart. And this could possibly be the Usos' biggest test yet. We're about to see how this one's going to go down right now. to the ring at a combined weight of 479 pounds Jimmy Uso and Jay Uso the Uso and their opponent at a combined weight of 16 pounds, Brett, the Hitman Hart, and Jim, the Anvil Neidhart, the Hart Foundation. 
Here we go. The Usos, the greatest tag team right now. But Bret Hart, one of the best wrestlers in professional wrestling history. And Jimmy here starting out with Hart. Getting control of the Hall of Famer right away in a absolutely vicious double chop there to the chest. And now arm wrench into the DDT. And Jimmy has got full control so far here. And I always think with these legends, are they able to even keep up with the new style of professional wrestling? So much more high risk and dangerous. And Bret Hart going to try to prove that indeed he can. Now lifting up Jimmy for a beautiful, perfect vertical suplex. You know Hart wasn't going to go down without a fight here. Russian leg sweep. Hart, the uh, the technician, as Jim the Anvil Neidhart, Natalia's father, the powerhouse of the Hart Foundation, going to take it to Jimmy here. And it seems to me like Jimmy could really use a tag to his brother Jay. And he might have that opportunity as he dumps the anvil on his head. And indeed, Jimmy being smart, tagging in the fresh Uso. In comes Jay. But Anvil getting control real quick. A technical wrestling takedown there. And now Irish whip Jay off the ropes coming back. Going for something there. That never works. Hardly ever. And oh, Anvil all oh, belly to belly. And even though these are old school moves and not very flashy, they get the job done. And all oh, the strength, Jay Uso. With the Rakishi driver. Paying homage to their father, Big Kish. And now again lifting the anvil up with a Michinoku driver. And Jay on a roll here. Taking it to Neidhart. Now all the quick tag tags between the Usos. Pretty, pretty smart tag team wrestling. Now picking the anvil up off the mat. And Jimmy snap suplex, and they're just tossing around uh, Neidhart like he's nothing. Putting pressure on the lower back. And now going, for, oh, was going for a suplex there, but Neidhart reversing into his own. Now he's got Jimmy in his grasp here, but Jimmy with the elbow shots to the gut. I think Anvil was looking to put Jimmy in the Hart Foundation's corner. But back into the Usos' corner goes Neidhart. Now Jimmy holding him still as Jay leaping forearm picture perfect on the jaw. Now Jimmy here. Oh, clotheslining, taking it to the outside. Outside of the ring, not a very uh, safe place to be. Jay calling the anvil to his feet here. And now running double axe handle off the apron. The Usos do love to fly. But anvil tripping up Jay Uso. Now gonna knee strike to the side of the head. Oh, oh, just straight, stiff kick to the gut here. Oh, my God, discus, clothesline, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God, Jay got the, excuse my language, got the absolute fuck <laughs> knocked out of him there. That was a lariat. Oh, look, the signature, Cobra Clutch. Anvil's got it cinched in, but Jay knew if he had that locked in long enough. Submitting was the only option. And now the Hart Foundation in firm control here. And Neidhart throwing Jay into the turnbuckle. Wait a second. Now Hart, oh my God, wait a second. Wait a second. And the Hart attack. The Hart attack on Jay. One. No, the ref too slow on that count there. And Anvil going after Jimmy, but 
He's going after Jay. He doesn't care if he's the illegal man. Shit is breaking down here, ref. Get control of this match. Bret Hart swinging an air. Oh, Jesus Christ. What is going on? Jay going for a Samoan drop. Bret Hart into a reverse DDT. Now picking Jay up off the mat here. Oh, no. Bret Hart. Paul Driver busting Jay Uso open. Good God. Now just planting an elbow right into the wound of Jay Uso. And you got to think, Hart looked like he was about to go for that sharpshooter. The most famous sharpshooter in wrestling history. But Jay not letting that one happen. Going for a kick. Jay caught him, but Hart able to get in an insiguri. Now throwing Jay into the Hart Foundation turnbuckle. Oh, wait a second. And I think they're looking for it again. Brett off the rope and heart attack to Jay Uso. The second one to Jay Uso. But Jimmy so quick getting in there and breaking it up. And that is why I have knockout on in every match. Because <laughs> that is permanently going to happen. Oh, might have been going for another heart attack there. But Jay with an old school move of his own hitting Neidhart with an atomic drop there. Now, Neidhart into the turnbuckle. Wait a second, Jay locking in the Tequila Sunrise. Jimmy with the Uso splash straight to the leg. And that is just a vicious version of the of the Usos finisher there going for the pin one no Brett now being the one to break up the pin in a vicious European uppercut but Jay looking for a neck breaker there but Hart this match has been crazy Hart hitting the vertical suplex is Jimmy locking in the tequila sunrise and is Jim the anvil gonna tap out to the tequila sunrise here and yes he does once again the Usos with the victory. And that match was absolutely insane. All oh, hell broke loose in that one. But the Usos coming out on top yet again. Here are your winners. Jimmy Uso and Jay Uso. And we are going to move on to our next match of the evening. Usos on a roll. Hands down, number one contenders for the tag titles. And we have a WCW legend, DDP, versus, once again, the man who stabbed the New Day in the back, but has been on quite a roll, not being able to pick up the win against the U.S. champ, Y2J, last week. But... He's looking to get momentum back on his side. And defeating a Hall of Famer in DDP will indeed get that done for Woods. But will he be able to do it? We're about to find out. Making his way to the ring. go DDP and WCW home field advantage definitely and Japan has gotten one hell of a treat so far here tonight and Xavier starting off immediately with a corkscrew neck breaker getting control early on but how long will he be able to keep it up backbreaker to DDP former WCW world heavyweight champion DDP might I add oh Jesus the neck 
or the neck, the elbow to the back of the neck and into a neck breaker. Working, definitely working on the head of Diamond Dallas Page here. Now Xavier, Irish whip, DDP coming off the rope. Nope, as usual, but DDP now, I think is far enough back here to hit a forearm strike. The only bit of offense he's gotten in, but Xavier not going to let that go on for too long here with the split and the Monte Fiesta, I think he calls it. So, no, the Monte Fisto or something. I don't know. But Xavier now going up to the middle rope here, pumping up the fist. Fist drop off the middle rope to Diamond Dallas Page. Now Xavier going for a scoop slam there, but the Hall of Famer. Had that one scouted, spinning back suplex to Woods. And as we've seen already tonight, oh, alley-oop powerbomb. As we've seen already tonight, just one big move, one big turnaround, and the match could completely change. Now DDP up to the middle rope. With a diving shoulder block, looking like a missile. Now DDP... Leg breaker, good God. Just bending and twisting the knee of Xavier Woods. And now, Woods looking for that fisherman neck breaker. One hell of a move, going for the pin. No, that was a rope break. DDP's foot barely, barely under the ropes there. Now Xavier gonna go up top, probably thinking about that picture perfect elbow no he is not he's calling diamond dallas to his feet here diving hurricanrana to ddp and now perfect position he's got to be looking for it here indeed he is picture perfect elbow off the top rope and now looking for the honor roll that leaping clothesline and hitting it perfect. DDP could be out here. One, two, no. Diamond Dallas kicking out at two, but Xavier in firm control of the Hall of Famer at this point in time. And DDP rolling out of the way, but Xavier just too quick and catches him into the turnbuckle. Now Xavier here looking for a tornado DDT. Perfect, DDT on DDP. <laughs> now Xavier now, oh, springboard crossbody to the back. Any high flying move to the back just makes it 10 times worse, I swear. And now me, me and Mr. Maverick many times have uh, explained how much that tweak in the neck, you know, that does not feel too good. Picking up DDP to one knee. Oh, I don't know what he was going for. DDP with a drop toe hold, and that could be the move to turn the tide here. Snapmare into a headlock, gonna slow down the match. And with Xavier Woods with the speed advantage, DDP very smart by slowing it down, but it does not matter. Xavier with the elbow strikes to the gut. But DDP catching him, Irish whip, going for that forearm yet again. But Xavier with the wheelbarrow face buster. Now picking DDP up. Oh, Xavier looking for a shot to the gut, but that one did not work out. Now picking up DDP, but DDP with a shoulder tackle. Oh, going for an elbow strike there. That didn't work either. DDP having a hard time still. Spinning back suplex. Now Xavier here. I don't know what he's going to do. Tweaking the neck again. Wanting to make sure the next time he hits that honor roll, it's going to put DDP down for good. Now it seems like Xavier is probably going to come out on top here because DDP cannot get anything in. And now, oh no, Xavier with a decapitator. Jesus Christ. Crushing the throat of Diamond Dallas Page. Northern Light Suplex. One, two, no, DDP still kicking out. 
It is not easy to put this man down. Wait a second. Lost in the woods. Oh, DDP's done after that one. One, two, three. Xavier not using that lost in the woods very often, but he needed to hit that move to finally put away DDP. And Xavier on with, with another W, taking one loss to, to the United States champion. And back with the momentum. And notice it. We have not seen Kofi Kingston or Big E at all here lately. And you would expect uh, them to have some sort of retaliation against Xavier Woods. I don't know, though. I guarantee you they're planning something. But speaking of rivalries that we haven't seen in a while, we never had a conclusion for the great one, The Rock, and the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. And tonight, it will be in a steel cage. This rivalry is coming to an end here in the main event of Week 11. But I will throw it out there. I changed the rules of the steel cage. Because in a normal steel cage, literally whoever hits their finisher is going to climb out and win. Because it takes too long to get back up to your feet in a cage. So, the only ways of winning. Pinfall, submission, knockout. And I believe if if they have the skill, they can, um, they can crawl out of the door. Who's going to come out on top? We're about to find out. Making his way to the ring from Miami, Florida, weighing in at 275 pounds, The Rock. his opponent from Charlotte, North Carolina, weighing in at 245 pounds, the Nature Boy, Rick Flair. And it has all come down to this, The Rock, The Nature Boy, inside of a steel cage. And now The Rock starting out belly to belly suplex to Flair, kick to the back. And last time, I believe these went, these two went head to head, swinging neckbreaker. It was a false count. It no, no holds barred match at the Super Show pay per view and Flair. It face first into the cage. Uh, that and that match was one of the brutal I've seen here in Universe mode. Uh, so. You know, they, they're going to try their absolute best. Both men legends. And this completely legal here in the steel cage. Flair removing the turnbuckle pad. And now stomping on the face of the great one. Because uh, this is the final match of this rivalry between these two. Rock off the rope coming back. Meeting an elbow to the face from Flair. Now Flair here. Got the rock in his grasp. Now throwing Rocky off the top rope. Picking Rocky back up. But the rock with a fireman's carry takeover. And now tossing Flair off the rope now. Oh, nope. Nope. Never worked. But wait a second. Flair into his own exposed turnbuckle. I guess the rock might have caught that out the corner of his eye. Going for the pin even though a ref isn't in the ring. <laughs> I don't know why they can't put a ref in the ring. It's kind of weird. And now, Rock. Oh, Scorpion death drop there. And now, The Rock pumping up. 
he still appears to be in pretty good shape here. Yeah, and now Rocky going up to the middle rope, forearm drop to Flair. Picking Flair up off the mat here, European uppercut. And here comes Flair now showing off the strength, gut wrench, suplex. Now, I, oh, with a disrespectful slap to the face of the great one. And Rock not too happy, hitting him with a shoulder tackle. Quick pin. One. Just a one count. Both of these legends with plenty in the tank. And now Flair going to show off the power again. Tossing the Rock with a butterfly suplex. Oh, wait a second. And... Woo! Flare knee drop across the face. And <laughs> the flare flop. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> I love the flare flop. Now picking Rocky up here. <clears throat> now trying to go for something from behind, not working out. <clears throat> And Flair trying to get a shot in on The Rock, but The Rock spine buster. And Flair immediately tried to get up to his feet. The Rock too close, still having the advantage here. And now going for a scoop slam. Rocky pushing him away. And a back suplex. Flair right on his neck. The whiplash off of that one. Flair not letting him affect it not letting it affect him with a backdrop. Back and forth we go and Flair looking to wear out the legs of The Rock. The Rock has submitted to that figure four leg lock in the past. So you know that Flair knows that's a move that can put The Rock away and he was going for it but Rocky not letting that one happen. Now Flair lariat to The Rock. Now these men are just gonna have to wear each other down until one of them's ready to give up and flare with the single leg camel clutch. But the Rock getting out of that one pretty quick. Wait a second, and now Rock going for a submission move of his own. The people sharpshooter locked in on Flair in the middle of the ring, no rope breaks anyways. And Flair rolling through here and getting out of that sharpshooter. And Flair going for a kick there. Rock caught it. Turning Flair around here. Oh, a backbreaker. Forearm drop and Flair is busted open. I was expecting nothing less out of this one. And now Rocky here. Oh, we're now working on Flair's legs, giving him a taste of his own medicine. Going for a kick there, and that's a similar transition. Oh, Flair! Flair with the people's grapefruits! Jesus Christ! Oh, my God. And the jewels of the rock in a lot of pain right now. Flair just squeezing them. Ugh. And now Flair here putting the rock in the turnbuckle, turning him around. And going for something. It didn't matter, though. The rock had that one scouted. Now Flair with a neck breaker, putting The Rock back down again. Flair bloodied and all, still putting up one hell of a fight. Oh, the whiplash of The Rock. Oh, no. Flair, Flair setting up for it. Break to the eyes and low blow after the Grapefruit Claw. Good God, going for the pin. And Flair! Flair picking up the win! The, ri the last match of the rivalry win in the steel cage with the low blow. I guess the after the grapefruit claw, one more shot to those grapefruits and Rocky was done for. And Ric Flair standing tall over The Rock, bloody and all, here in WCW Week 11 in Japan. One hell of a treat 
for these Je Japanese wrestling fans here tonight. Look at the blood pouring down the face. I knew that one was going to be brutal, but Ric Flair finally putting his stamp on this rivalry with the victory. And that was it for WCW Week 11. Next time we will be coming to you will be ECW Week 11 as uh, at the end of week 12 will be our next dual brand pay-per-view. So remember guys, if you enjoy my content, please leave a like. Oh yeah, match of the night. Have to give it to Ember Moon and Alundra Blaze. The women blowing the roof off, off the place yet again. So let me know what your match of the night. Even if I forget, I sometimes forget to say what match of the night was. But even if I don't, let me know what your favorite match of the night was in the comments. But remember, guys, if you enjoy my content, please leave a like, comment, and or subscribe. Also, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Brandon Brandy Bear for both. That would be greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you guys for joining us here tonight on WCW Week 11. And we will see you all next time. Oh, woo!